Um, most of you who have read any of NCSE stuff know that we obsess about something called the pillars of creationism. And, and the reason I keep bringing this up is because it's a really easy thing to remember. If you can remember these three arguments, virtually every claim that a creationist makes or letter to the editor or any other kind of communication, book, whatever, it could be fit into one of the three of these. And if you can recognize these, you can place any of the argument into it, and then you automatically know the answer to the argument once you understand the, argument, the responses to the pillars. The first pillar, of course, is that evolution is a theory in crisis. Scientists are giving up on evolution. It is no longer considered uh, um, a valid, um, hello, all of a sudden, here we go, it is no longer considered a valid argument. The second pillar of creationism is that evolution and religion are incompatible. That's something that is uh, uh, exercised with great enthusiasm. And the fairness argument, that it's only fair if you teach uh, evolution that you balance it with something. We'll either balance it with creationism or balance it with creation science, balance it with intelligent design, balance it with uh, uh, evidence against evolution. You're seeing a pattern here, right? What we're seeing today is the first and third. The Academic Freedom Acts um, are claims about the validity of evolution, but also very, very strong claims to promote the fairness uh, 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 pillar. Uh, if you look at the um, proposed Academic Freedom Act, which you can find on the web, uh, the, um, the way of marketing this is extremely clever. Let me teach. Let me think. Who doesn't want your kids to think, right? The framing of this argument is very, very clever. It's framed in terms of critical thinking and academic freedom, not framed in terms of promoting somebody's religious idea. The um, Discovery Institute has the Academic Freedom Petition, which you can quickly go down to their website and um, sign up for. And there again, we're talking about the academic freedom of teachers to teach the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, teachers will be protected from being fired, harassed, intimidated, etc. Also part of the frame that the intelligent design people are very enthusiastically promoting that um, they are the underdogs and being discriminated against by big science. I guess that's us. Big science. And teachers are, and students also will be protected in these bills. So that's where we are. And uh, as I say, come January, there's going to be more of this. Uh, we fully expect to have uh, new and improved versions of Academic Freedom Acts stressing these kinds of critical thinking and academic freedom, not religiously sounding ideas whatsoever. If you want to know more about this, you can go to ncse.com. If you go to um, this little button over here, you can sign up for a, a Friday electronic newsletter that will depress you uh, and give you the <laughs> what, what, give you the news for, for what goes on during the week. If you go to the news uh, button up here, you'll be taken to this page where you can sort for whatever state you're interested in or you can sort for a year of interest and you'll pull up all of the uh, news that we have about what's going on in that state in terms of the creation and evolution controversy. Um, and of course, it's a membership organization, so you're welcome to join. I will not discourage you from doing so. Um, my colleagues are Glenn Branch, who uh, writes that wonderful Friday e-newsletter that many of you get, and, and uh, I know from the feedback we get uh, that is just an extraordinarily helpful thing for many people. Louise Mead is our Education Outreach Director. Robert Lunn is our Communications Director. Peter Hess is our Faith Outreach Director. And our three wonderful flare-up wranglers, the guys who uh, spend most of their time giving advice to teachers and school board members and lawyers and everybody else, Josh Rosenau, Steve Newton, and Eric Mickle. Um, it's a really great bunch of people to work with, and I'm extremely pleased that uh, I have such a talented staff. And of course, like all right-minded organizations, we are naturally on Facebook. And um, there we go. <laughs> I must say, 
it's a very good feeling to have Jeannie Scott and her gang on one side in this battle. Um, in, in a few minutes, I have to go and catch a plane, but I, I'd like to initiate the uh, qu question session if people want to uh, ask questions to Jeannie. I, well, I know it's not, but it's not my fault. Um, so I am one of those people that lives in Texas. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering, as a citizen that doesn't have uh, kids, uh, but is interested in trying to make sure that everyone else you know, does get the right education, what is just an ordinary citizen going to do, obviously, other than just voting the right people? Never, never underestimate the importance of voting the right people. Right. I mean, you may not have kids, but you have one vote. And you know something? Don McLeary has one vote. <laughs> it's always good to remind people of that, you know? The creationists each have one vote just like scientists. Um, there are various ways. Certainly join the Texas Citizens for Science. Uh, there's another wonderful organization that we partnered with uh, in addition to TCS, and that's the... Um, come on, thank you. Texas Freedom Network. Wonderful people. They really do great work. Also, if you'd like to become really hands-on, I don't know what your background is, uh, if you're a scientist, if you're, you know, whatever. Um, if you can volunteer at your local school, they always need extra people. They need people for tutoring. They need extra people to check out books in the library. I mean, there's get to know your local teachers. Teachers are fabulous people. 